Hi everyone, it's Cardinal Kelly Patrick again. Uh, today I wanted to talk about, uh, are you walking in the way of the Lord? Now, the first indicator is, um, ask yourself the question, uh, do you love God and do you love each other? Okay. Part of loving God is respecting Him and His Son and following in His way which is to love God and love each other. Then you're walking in His pathway. Then you're walking in His way. But if you have not consistently maintained that, then you're struggling. You're undergoing some spiritual warfare or you're just having some problems with maturity or it might be a little touch of self-centeredness or guilty, you know, conscience. Some people tend to project whenever they feel like they have not fulfilled or they fall short of something. Well, whatever it is, I'm not a psychologist, but I've observed human nature quite a bit, and it just seems to go hand in hand. But we've got to work on this. I mean, God and His Son are the ones that grant you your salvation, or not. They're the ones that absolve us, or not. We are the ones that are meant to humble ourselves before Him. And if He asks anything of us, then we, we humbly submit and provide that. Got a lot of people who are in the realm of the Lord, but not 100% walking in His way. Or they're trying to seek Him or claim to follow Him, but they're not walking in His way. I'm smiling, but it's not a good thing. It's it's a really bad thing. I, I think that, you know, it's worth it for us to talk about it and get some correction going on, you know. Take a mental checklist and do some inventory on yourself, spiritual inventory on yourself and your life. And make small changes. Small changes go a long way. Now, you don't have to turn your life upside down, but... You know, we're here to support the Lord in His way. And instead of sit back on the sidelines and observe the world and, and seek self-comforts. You know, I keep hearing people to discuss about what their preferences are and that just doesn't go hand in hand with the way of the Lord. I prefer a lot of things too. Um, but I don't always get my way. You know, and I do get what I need and I'm very thankful and grateful and you know I think it's time to just learn to love God and love each other in every moment and every day and every way otherwise you're really not serving him you're really not in his path especially if you're going to question him a lot of people are like God why would you do this to me well, you're probably fucking up. You need time to get your shit together. And speaking of time, a lot of our fine priests, priestess, and uh, clergy of the Lord in general, uh, of the Ecumenical Order of Christ, have been doing some wonderful video sermons and lessons. And one that stood out recently was about time. And, you know, when is the great day going to come? And you notice, you know, you search YouTube and you see dozens of date setters out there. Or people who claim that, you know, others are date setting when they're not. It's like a war of dates. It's really crazy. Anyway, who gives a flip about the date if you haven't got your shit together? Okay, it's going to be on this day. But you know what? Is he going to take you? Do you really walk in his way? Do you live in his way? If you don't, then who gives a flip about the date? You still need to worry. You still need to worry about what you're doing and how you're living. Who cares about the date? It's another test. It's another distraction. Satan's here to test mankind. They are the ones that make the choices, good or bad. He just reveals them for what they are. He reveals you for what you are. Okay. 
So you can talk about the date all you want to, but again, if you aren't living according to His way, and you're not humbling yourself to submit to Him, to walk in His way and what He asks of you, then you got to back up a few paces and relearn. And you're going to have to keep doing that until you learn, implicitly. A lot of people are out there arguing with each other about these kind of things, you know, the date or, oh, this hasn't happened and that hasn't happened yet and so it can't be true and this can't be and how do you know? You know, it's already been established that the Gospels are missing, that the Bible has been tampered with, and even the parts that are correct, people twist it and manipulate it, to use it basically using the Bible as a tool. Um, so listen, we're not here, God isn't here according to the way of man. He's not to submit to you. And if, if you're making demands of him, you're screwing up. Okay, because he's the one in charge. He's the king of all kings. He's the sovereign. He's your salvation. He's the one that determines if your sins have been absolved or not. Have you forgotten? Earth is like one giant educational institution for spiritual maturity. Have you forgotten that you still need to learn? That you're here to learn and to spiritually mature so that you may be perfected to be before Him, not the other way around. Yeah, we yearn to see Him. We look forward to the great day of the Lord. But this is not a buffet, okay? You're just not going to get what you want without any effort. You know, if you're not out there helping your brother or sister and you're living a selfish life and seeking only the comforts, you know, the perks of paradise, but you're not living in the way of the Lord, what makes you think that you're even going to enter? Because the purpose of the new kingdom, paradise ever after, heaven on earth, is to not re-perpetuate what man has perpetuated that has poisoned the earth, literally and figuratively. So recheck yourself, get focused, get your shit together. Humble yourself. You may call him brother, but he's your master. He is your Lord. He is the one that's taught you and evolved mankind over the decades. Without him, we'd still be cavemen, basically. Primitive ways, primitive thoughts. And some of us still struggle with those primitive ways and primitive thoughts. You read the Bible, you remember prophecy, and you're staying focused. Then you remember not to question the Lord, not to judge Him, not to negotiate. It's what Satan tried to do with Him. You know, but you could have all of this if you just submit to me. No. We submit to the Lord and His Father and His way. He is a humble teacher. He will ask that you not worship Him, but to worship God and His way. But let's face it, He's got His shit together. We don't. We're the ones that don't have it together. So stop doing what you're doing and fix it. Just fix it. You know, it might be a little uncomfortable, but you're electing to be a light in the world if you get out of your comfort zone and reach out to you, your fellow brother, your fellow sister, your selfishness. I might be talking to quite a few people here. Not a single person. I can definitely say that. But you know who you are and what you need to work on. I'm not going to poke your eye out because I'm sure I've got a plank here that i got to work on. You know, I, I struggle with lots of things, but I'm here today to remind you that you're to work on yourself, to focus on yourself, <clears throat> and do what God is asking you to do. Just to wake up, awaken, 
and, and do what you're supposed to do, to love God and love each other. And then you're walking in His way. Then you're working according to His will. Otherwise, you cannot claim it or say it. Okay. I'm not quite sure if we're just repeating ourselves here, but I'm going to ask that the video we made a number of years ago that was narrated by David Daniels, our dear beloved departed David Daniels, and we wrote this so that people could understand the Lord's teaching about true love. And I hope that reminder helps somebody to have a refresher in his way and, and that we get our shit together. Love you guys. Remember to love each other. Step out of that comfort zone. That's what it's all about. Love is greater than fear. Love is greater than your selfishness. Love is greater than your comforts. Okay, let's rise above. Till then. What does it truly mean to love God and love one another? First, one must know what love truly is. Brothers and sisters of the world, true love is strong. As per the words of Imperial Regent Angelus Domini, it's hard to quantify. There is a modern lie that has deluded society. That is the belief that true love equals unconditional love. But unconditional love is a damaging fantasy. Someone can love a painting or a sonnet or the way the moonlight reflects on the water, but in none of these scenarios does the object of love return that emotion in kind. True love is something shared between at least two beings in relatively equal measure, but the key word is shared because it cannot be unconditional. If one partner adores the other loyally and faithfully while the other abuses, lies, cheats, steals, etc., that's not true love and the victim staying in such a relationship because of the belief in unconditional love is foolish. Conditions are necessary to ensure that love remains true and not a source of abuse. So when one can meet the conditions of a relationship, and so much as the love shared is healthy, mutually enriching and reciprocal, only then can it be true love. Now I ask you all this, what are you going to do? Are you going to choose to truly love God so that you know how to love each other? With all that in mind, this kind of love does not mean looking to God for one-sided agendas and comforts, but to seek a relationship with Him. It means to exemplify His will. People fail to recognize how to truly love God. Let there no longer be a spirit of confusion. The truth makes you stronger if you receive its medicine. We need to stand united as God has will and the Lord has sought to guide you in. It is stated in Romans and again more than once in Corinthians this example. Corinthians 12.12 12, to be specific. Many members, one body. For even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. Do you understand that this is an example of God's will and true love? We have to heal together or we will crumble. We cannot do it for you. True love is just as strong as it is also kind. When a soul is in danger, you implement a love that protects, them, yet boldly prompts. Love also responds to that prompting. It does not come with a faint voice. It does not respond with a separate agenda. Look to true love and not the fantasy of love. The fantasy of love is one that society teaches that is acceptable to fail God, yet claim to truly love Him.
that needs to change. You have to realize right now that you will lose everything as you know it if you continue this way. The world majority stands in a false one-sided love. Again, I ask you, what are you going to do? Are you going to choose to truly love God so that you know how to love each other? For those who do understand, may God's will be done and His light shine upon you in service to the Messiah. And thanks and true love be joyous. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. True love for Him. Rael is the Word of God. Be joyous.